is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have breaking news from the National Hurricane Center. A new area of interest has been designated in the Western Caribbean Sea towards the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to go ahead and cover all of this. We have Tropical Storm Franklin exiting Hispaniola right now. The remnants of Tropical Storm Emily continue to organize. Invest 92L is now starting to reorganize, and it's starting to show a better center of circulation. So we're going to go ahead and cover all of this very quickly, so that way we can get all the information out for you. So here's the situation. We have a 40-mile-per-hour Tropical Storm Franklin as of the 5 p.m. advisory. It has not been updated yet on the NHC website last time I checked. If we go ahead and show you the public advisory, it's not uh, been updated just yet, but still 40 miles per hour right here. So definitely an interesting situation coming up. It is expected to strengthen up to a Category 2 hurricane in the next few days at least, but I've seen models of it potentially getting stronger than that. So that's what we have going on. This this latest area of interest that just got tagged. An area of low pressure could form in a couple of days over the northwestern Caribbean Sea. Some slow development of the system is possible over the weekend and early next week while it moves slowly northward across the eastern Gulf of Mexico. 20% chance of formation in the next seven days. It's that Central American gyre that I've been reporting on the last couple of days. So we'll have to continue to keep a very close eye on it as time continues to go on. Remnants of Emily now have a 70% chance of development in the next 48 hours. For, uh, conditions are for Forecast to become more conducive for development by tomorrow, and the system is likely to regenerate into a tropical storm by Friday while it's moving northward. In 92L, the conditions continue to be a little bit uh, not the best. However, it is showing some signs of organization, and they have now re-upped uh, re it to a 20 to 40, a 20 40 rather than a 10 30 percent chance of formation. Now we have a 20 percent in the next 48 hours, 40 in the next seven days. Something we need to monitor for sure as time continues to go on. We'll pay attention to it right here. So here's the situation we have. Right here, this is that uh, that area. The gyre is in Central America that we've been monitoring. This is Franklin, this is Emily, and this is 92L, showing all of which are showing signs of organization. So we'll have to keep a close eye on it once again for you guys. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some more model runs that have this updated. The 12Z European came out, and what I'm about to show you is potentially shocking right here. So here's the 12Z European. This th system comes off of Central America, starts organizing in the next couple of days, according to the European model, and then it kind of s slowly moves north. It kind of stays around the Yucatan Peninsula as it's trying to organize and develop. It gets down to 1,002 millibars tropical storm by the time it exits the Yucatan and makes its entrance into the Gulf of Mexico. And from then, it starts to organize and strengthen into a hurricane, as it moves to the eastern Gulf, and then it is expected to make, according to the European, sh a shot at the Florida Panhandle right here as around a Category 2 hurricane, pressure of 977 millibars. If we actually go ahead and show you the 850 millibar heightened wind, we can go ahead and zoom in on this just a little bit over here, so that way we can give you a better eye on it. So here's what we have. This is, the, this is what we got right here with the, eight, with the 850 uh, height right here. According to this, we're looking at 70, uh, at 70 knots, 850. However, I'm not 100% sure. Pressure is definitely indicative of a Category 2 system, so we'll have to monitor it for as time continues to go on. But then after that, it is expected to stay just on shore and impact southern Georgia and the Carolina, uh, Carolinas before moving out to sea. And we'll have to, we'll have to see what happens from there as the zero, as the model pretty much uh, is at max time. So now we'll go ahead and show you the CMC run right here. The CMC shows this thing organizing and developing similar to the European, although it moves a little bit faster than the European is calling for and actually has it making landfall as a Category 1 hurricane near the Naples area, uh, once again near Fort Myers, so we'll have to pay attention to that as Ian victims are still recovering from there. Then this thing moves out to sea and then starts to uh, basically parallel the coast of Georgia and the Carolinas, potentially leaving them some outer bands. It then merges in with a cold front and moves, th and moves through New England. So that's the CMC run with this. The nav gem, we have the 12Z nav gem right here. 12Z of this area of interest right here. It hasn't really been picking up on it too much. 
but the NHC has tagged it, and so other, uh, other runs have. The Icon uh, 18Z especially has, although it only goes 120 hours out, and it has as a 1,004 millibar tropical storm at that time uh, impacting Cuba. So it's definitely a huge situation we need to monitor as Cuba, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Florida all need to keep a very close eye out on this potential situation we have. What's easily working for this new area of interest is the global sea temperatures right here. Those were just the climate. Uh, those are just the climate chances of when a potential tropical system could develop. So that's what that's what was going on. So here's what we have: 29 to 30 plus degrees Celsius waters across the Caribbean and across the Gulf, where this thing is expected to organize and develop. So that's the first thing working for it easily. 86 plus degree Fahrenheit all the way from Cuba to the Gulf Coast of Florida, either in the Panhandle or south of that near uh, Fort Myers, Sarasota, that area. Definitely something to monitor. And then we have to go ahead and show, uh, next show you the ocean heat content. Where this thing is going to be coming off of Central America, it's going to be moving automatically through over 100 OHC. And then in some areas, 150 to 175. In some places, even 200 OHC. So if it moves a little bit further out to sea and takes full advantage of that, combined with some weaker wind shear that is being forecasted, it definitely could intensify at a very quick pace, and that's absolutely what we do not need to see, especially this close to land. So that's the first two things working for this. Thing that could potentially work against it is the wind shear. However, it is forecast to weaken over the next couple of days. Currently, it's about 40 knots or so across where this area of interest is. However, don't expect that to stay there forever. It's expected to move uh, move out in the next couple of days and give it a uh, breath to much better conditions. That's why the NHC tagged this area of interest, after all. And we'll go ahead and also show you the shear and moisture forecast as well. Here's the shear forecast. In the next 24 hours, the shear already starts weakening considerably in the Western Caribbean Sea, That's pr which is pretty interesting right here. And then the next 48 hours, the shear pretty much clears out where the system starts to enter the, uh, the Caribbean and starts to organize and develop. It does enter the Gulf of Mexico a bit more. However, this system acts quickly and develops as quick quickly as it could. It definitely wouldn't, it, this shear wouldn't do much to it in the long term. So we'll go ahead and show you the moisture component. Absolutely moist conditions in the Caribbean Sea. It's where this gyre is going to be entering the Caribbean. It's going to be moving through great conditions for development. So if this organizes at a very fast pace and, develop, and develops, it definitely could potentially be a strong tropical storm before it, before it enters the Gulf of Mexico. And from there, with the loop current and how warm and how much OHC there is, it definitely could continue its intensification phase as time continues to go on. So going back to the shear forecast right here, we're going to go ahead and go to 72 hours out. There is a bit of a resurgence of shear right here in the Gulf of Mexico. However, this system is expected to move very slowly. And, then, and by the time we get out to like six days, there is a bit of shear that could impact it to the west. However, that a lot of that's also inflow and outflow, as we've discussed previously with some of these uh, runs right here. We see a lot of potentially big shear to the west or to the north of it, but it's also a lot of inflow, a lot of outflow. So definitely something we need to monitor as time continues to go on. And then basically the shear forecast by the time this thing approaches the Florida Panhandle, it is it does get a bit more sheery, which could limit development. And the dry air component to this, there is some dry air once this enters the Gulf, but if it can fight it off, it definitely could de uh, develop into something pretty interesting, I should say. We're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. Goal with this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.